Dr. Nofia Sasaki is an Associate Professor of Natural Resource Management, AIT. He is recognized for his research achievement in sustainable development of forest, carbon retention, and reserve-based financial compensation under the REDG scheme of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Good afternoon. So I want to talk today, um, so everyone is already good, right? So you, you can understand what we are talking about. So it's okay if you, you can't follow what we are talking about. You can just raise your hand. You can ask questions. It's up to you. You can interrupt me anytime. Okay, so, so how many of you know the, know the term climate change mitigation? One, two, three, four, okay, that's good. Um, mitigation, when you talk about climate change mitigation, you talk about how you can reduce emission, right? So in other words, if you talk about climate change adaptations, you are talking about how you can plant the trees and try to get the tree absorbs the carbon back. So one thing to do is to stop climate change by reducing emissions and other way around, you plant the trees and get the, get the carbon, try to absorb carbon back to the forest. So that's what I'm going to talk today. Okay? And the, what is, what about, why put data, big data here with us? Okay, um, yeah, I just try to say that so we use big data because when you talk about carbon mitigations, people are paying you the money, right? They say, let's say I want to reduce emissions by not driving a car to work. But who would trust you? And one more, let's say I plant 10 trees in my backyard and these trees will be there. But let's say if I'm a buyer in the Europe, let's say I, I buy you to plant the tree because I only want you to plant the tree because you, when you plant the tree, you get carbon, right? The, the carbon stays in the trees and the tree belongs to the farmer. Like suppose farmers are planting the trees. But to be transparent, can I just trust you, like say, okay, I plant 10 trees? I would not trust you, right? How can I trust you if, if, they, if in Thailand, if there are, we have about 40 million farmers? Can I trust all 4 million farmers, or 40 million farmers in Thailand? So that's why the database, uh, big data came from. So every tree, so what we want to, we try to do, like at AIT, my team now, and, and try to teach my students, try to track all the trees that are the farmer planted. You cannot track the natural forest because it's already there. But if you start planting today, we can track, right? You plant one, we track it, you take a photo, and you bring that to the website, and we know you plant it. And after three months, I come and ask you again, I just send you a message, I say, hey, I want to see my tree, can you take a photo for me? And I see the tree is there. So that's why the big data come, uh, big data come from. So I will show you, uh, I will give you a few examples here, but that's not my work, the other people work. My work is still in secret, so when I open it, you can see it. I want to talk today, I, there will be two parts for my talk today. One is about, I will introduce the technology innovation that has been done recently, and then I will have a game that we, we will listen to pitching. Let's say if you know, they say, you know I, you can get the money by planting the tree, for example. You know that if you build a computer, you know you will get the money. But you need the money to build a computer, right? You can't get the money. You have a big idea, you have a big dream, you want to do something big. But then you look at your pocket, you have only maybe 20 baht. You cannot do anything with 20 baht, right? So that's why uh, on the second part of my talk, I will show you about the pitchings. I mean, some of you, I look at the, the registration, some of you just still 18. But in Japan, one guy, he opened a company when he was 17. What he did with that company, he become a big guy now. He, so everything, every time you buy, if you go to the shop, you buy something, you get a receipt, right? And then he created the apps that take a photo of that receipt and he buy you 10 baht or 10 yen, sorry, 10 yen for everyone who upload that receipt to his phone, to apps. And he was 17. How he, how he make money for that? Can you imagine how he, how he can make money from these 10, so he buy you, not for free. 
if somebody upload the receipt to the apps, he buy it 10 yen. And how he get money back? Any idea? Maybe he is using analytic softwares to analyze something and then uh, selling the structured data, not the unstructured data. Then he can uh. I think they're a little bit too difficult. Too difficult. Yeah, that's good. Too good. I know what you mean. Okay. Um, yeah, the idea is that it's more like it's more marketing purpose. Okay, if you buy something, you got it in your receipt, you know the time, right? The times where it is, who you are. And every time you upload, then we know who what kind of thing you buy, you like to buy at what times. And then he, every ten yen he bought, he sells hundred yen. Not a bad idea, right? So every so he may spend 50 yen for paying for his stuff, then still he make 50 yen for every small receipt. Okay, so so okay, so what I want to say that I will have two parts. First, it's about introduction to technology, and then second one about pitch decks. I'm not sure you guys know about that. Pitch deck is about you know every time you go for this kind of let's say suppose you are the audience, and like investor, some of the other investor, and I'm, I'm the one who wants to sell my idea to you. I need to explain in the right way, that because I have only like three to five minutes, I cannot talk long. And within three or five minutes, I can get $20, a million dollars, it's up to only, only five minutes. So that I want to show you three examples of how people do it, and I want you to be investors, and I want you to answer my question sheet, which one you want to invest, just say yes, no, or maybe. And based on that, maybe I would ask some of them, some of you, to say why you want to invest in this one. Okay? So I will have here, uh, okay, another term that you are not familiar with, like the Paris Agreement, right? So maybe you are still, still young, you are still new to Paris Agreement. So the Paris Agreement, uh, you understand that. Most of the country has signed Paris Agreement mm -hmm. to carbon uh, to maintain between 2%, not increasing 2% every year, not increasing 2% of carbon emission. Okay, almost, almost. Yeah, mm, yeah, it's it not, not 2%, it's 2 degrees Celsius. Two degrees Celsius. Yeah, yeah. So it's it by in the next 100 years, we want to make sure that we maintain temperature not to, to go up for more than 2 degrees. So there's a Paris Agreement, and unlike the Kyoto Agreements, the Kyoto Agreements only reach nation was part of the agreements. But for the Paris Agreement, every nation must be part of it. So which means Thai also part of it, but we don't say Thai need to reduce this emission. We only say, you give me your idea how much you can do emission reduction in your own country. But when you say yes, that become a binding agreement. Right? They don't force you to say, like say, I don't force you to go to movie with me, for example. But if you go with me, that must become a binding. You cannot go back. Okay, so that, that's the Paris Agreement. So I will, I will show you how it works. And that's how it looks like. So, okay, maybe the graph sometimes make you difficult to understand. Yes, think that this is what we are emitting now every year. We are emitting this about 40 billion ton of carbon per year. And this is what, based on our uh, past strength, we expect that if we do nothing, we would go up there. So the Paris Agreement want to make sure that we will just stay at this one. Okay? So what does it mean? It continues to go, it uh, allow it to go, but it, what we want to, we would like to stop it when it reach uh, 2030. We want it to be stable and then go it down. So to do that, this is the, the guideline, but each country needs to submit. Okay, so this is a quick summary from, from the table. So you see that there are about 40 billion tons of carbon per year you are emitting. And you don't know. When I was uh, a few years ago, when I, I bring an uh, investor to the field, one of the drivers, my, our driver, was asking, hey, Sir, if you buy carbon, 1 billion tons of carbon, so where are we going to store that carbon? Can you answer that? Let's say if I buy clothes, one ton of clothes, you know, like clothes like this, I need warehouse to store it, right? But it's the same thing. When you talk to the general public, we say, okay, I want to buy a one ton of carbon. Then he was expecting I want to build another location and to store carbon. That's why we are looking forest, for forest to store carbon. So he thought that I am clearing the forest and use that location for storing of carbon. 
Okay, so that is the, the, the general uh, con uh, uh, misunderstanding. So the idea is that when you plant the tree, so here is what we are, do, we are seeing now. You plant the tree, the tree will take this back here. And that's under the Paris Agreements. If you do that, in developing countries, you, you are entitled to get funding. But how you get funding, it's all up to you. How you propose the funding. They will not say, they will not come and say, give me the proposal. They will say, what do you want to achieve? Let's say, if I want to protect Khao Yai National Park, then I would need to propose. They'll say, if I protect Khao Yai National Park, I can reduce emission one million ton of carbon per year because I will implement one, two, three, four, ten activities. And those activities need to be verified, need to be monitored. And this is where all the database or all the data, big data come in. So it's not just say in the paper, because usually you don't see carbon, right? Around is carbon. You don't see it. So everything is based on the documentation. So, but if you start restoring the forest, you start planting the forest, you can track now because of the database you will have. In the past, you cannot do it, but now everything, if you know where, if you, you have an idea how to do it. There are plenty of database, plenty of computation. The point is, you don't have an idea how to make use of it. If you, if you guys listen to the big, like Jack Ma, for example, have you heard of Jack Ma, right? Yeah, Jack Ma, what he was saying, it's not about it's not about data, it's not about computation. It's about your idea now, how you can make use of the data. Data is everywhere. Like Google Earth Engine, for example. Everybody know that? Okay, Google Earth Engine, okay, you, go, you know Google search, right? So Google Earth Engine, they upload the image from the satellite once every eight days, okay? So every eight days you get one new image, and everything in one image, it contains all information you need around us. It depends, so that's why if you have an idea, you can make use of it. And other thing that we are having in the future, we have two billion hectares of forest that has been degraded. So what's important for that? If the forest has been degraded, all your dry productions, all your crop production also degraded. So that is the problem. So we need to restore that back. And also when we restore it, we don't have much data. In, in the forest, we don't have much data. But in, in the image, what I'm saying earlier, there's a lot of data for that. And here it's a little bit, okay. When you talk about peri agreement, you talk about emission reductions. If I were you, I would, you would ask, compare to what? If I don't, if I say emission reductions, I need to have a line where I can compare, right? Let's say if I, I'm, say I'm taller than you, but I know that you already know you. But the Paris Agreement is the same. You need to have a baseline. So that's why the baseline come in. So under the Paris Agreement, so the Paris Agreement will start from 2020 in the next two years until 2030. And to do that, they had a baseline, a baseline here, base year here. And from there, we need to use emissions. And that's what we call it, I said earlier, so each country need to submit this one we call nationally determined contribution. So that is, they don't force you to do it. Under the Kyoto Protocols, every con not every country, the rich nation, they have obligation to do it. But under the Paris Agreement, they ask you to submit this one. In this, inside this one, there are two options for mitigation. One is a must. You need to say whether you want to do 1%, 0% is up to you. You, you, you need to say something. If you say that, it becomes a binding agreement. 1%, 2%. Another option, we call it here. If you do more than this, I will give you more the money. So that we call it you know, if more funding. You know how much funding we, are, we have now for this purpose? $12 trillion. So it, now it's all on your idea how much you can make use of this one. Okay, so if you try to understand here, it's more than others. If you try to understand the Paris Agreement, the financial support, and how much you can make, you, know, you can make use of your own idea to, to keep in this two market. You know, many technology like engineering people, you start to do coding, you do something on your own, but you don't know what, where you can get the money. 
But the guy, I will show you one of the Japanese guys, he tried to develop technology, make, make use of the uh, financial support uh, from this kind of agreement, and then he developed uh, technology to reduce waste. So then the big data we already talked earlier. So what's important here, I give an idea here. In the past, something with the data calculation, right? So you put in, in Excel, you can do it. But when I, I, I was in Japan for many years already, but um, the difference a lot when I was in Japan, I tried to calculate three parameters. Using Excel, it takes like three days to calculate three parameters. And then nobody can touch my computer. I need to put a, a, a paper saying that my computer is calculating the parameters. Nobody should touch it. Right? And then when I, wrote, when I went to Germany, only two years later, I calculated the parameter the same. Just one click, less than one second, I can get parameter already. Others important, and this is an example how, why we need this one. Like say, you know, this is an example to, to, to get you thinking. Let's like say, you know, every time you take a photo, it's about, it about three megabytes, right? So if you upload that photo to your website, if everyone uploads it, you know, the data is already big. And like our computer, it's like your handphone, for example, only you know, smartphone, only like 16 or 64, yeah, 64 something. So you upload this one, maybe only a few big, you already got run out of it, even for your own self. But now we have that one. And innovation, so yeah, I think you already learned a lot about that. So what is important in my understanding, it's not about you coming up with new idea. New idea, new idea. So innovation is something that you start developing something. And then you found a problem inside, in between that. And you try to come up with a problem, a, a solution to solve it. Let's say you go to Bangkok, for example. You're on a van, and your van get accident or something. And you find a way how to go there. Still, you can reach there. So that, that, that I, I would, in my, my understanding, it's, it's uh, innovation. And the big data come, like here, have you seen this? When you see this one, what do you think about? Yeah, it's taken from the drone. So every image you take from the drone, it contains everything, not just the image. So here we use uh, uh, then we call it yeah, elevation to calculate the tree height. If by looking at it, you can calculate tree height immediately. Like we, we teach our students here, when you do tree measurement, one plot like 30, sorry, okay. When you do measurement of the tree, you, you set up a plot like this, maybe 50 meters times 50 meters, and it takes one day to measure all the trees. When we fly drone, it's only five minutes, just go and back and forth, and then we just wait. After five minutes, the drone comes back to the same place. So, but you need to process the data. data this help data require a lot of space, a, a lot of computation. But it, you know how to do it. It's just one click, one or two click. It's already there. And you know all this, right? Like Google Cloud, you know it? Yeah, for, for, for programmer, you know that. And Amazon Web Service, it's also cloud. So, so what I want to say here oh. are where you can store the data. And for Facebook, I just want to see, uh, show you this one. Every day, they have four petabytes. Every day, they add up new and new. So without the, the cloud, you cannot calculate this one. In your our PC, you can, you can take this one, divided by the, the PC, the, the, this space, and then you, you, you know how, much, how many PC you need. Maybe the whole re this room, it's all full with the PC to store the data. And you see this one now, now it's coming to echo innovation. So you see this kind of bomb, right? Yeah, you see that one, maybe in the movie you think this is the bomb coming, you know, to destroy whatever, terror, terrorist, whatever you, you call it. So in this now, we have technology that inside this bomb, all the three seeds are there. So they, the, we, uh, they, what we call machine learning calculates the uh, uh, developed algorithm to get, you know, if they fly this direction, they say this is the location where they can plant this species. So it's not the same species. They already put algorithm in that the drone, and the drone will tell if they fly the direction, they put this one species here, that species there, and there. It is rock, no. So that, that, is, that is we have that technology. And so what I want to introduce today, we have this Mei Kai. I'm not sure if there are any Chinese student here. Did I pronounce correctly? 
Uh, if you know it, if you don't know it, that's fine. So this is a new, a new technology that brings farmers uh, product close to the restaurant. Let's say if you, if you plant the right farming here, you don't need to bring to Bangkok, right? If you know the restaurant nearby that needs your products. So that this, this company, they do that. And in, I think in two or three years, it's already reached $2.3 billion. Right? It's only one guy get come up with the idea. I will show you how to do that, or how to do how they do it. And then the Japanese company, uh, we call Umitron. So this company use AI technology, machine learning, and satellite imagery to calculate when, where, at what time we should give fish the food, right? So you go around AIT, you see some people give the food to the fish every time. What happens if the fish don't like it? If the, it's not the time that the fish want to eat? Yeah, in Japan, I saw a commercial, a very interesting commercial. The guy who sit, yeah, who sit like that, <laughs> yeah. And he give a food to the bird. You know what happened? The bird kicked the food back. Because, and then the, the food hit his face. So the bird said, it's not the time for me to get the food because I don't like the food. So that's why this guy developed technology to tell that when, where, and at what time, and how much the, the food should be given to the fish. If you give too much to the fish, what happened? The, 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 what the, what the, the sea become dirty, right? And the more they eat, the more they come out. That is commonly the fish. So that, and that they, they, he tried to do that. And this one, very big uh, ant, we call ant forest. Anybody heard of that? That's good. I can't say you lie then. So ant forest is uh, an app developed by Alibaba Group. You know Alibaba, right? Yes. So what they do, they try to switch, let's say, if you buy something online, okay, you buy something online, whether if you pay online directly, which means you save carbon energy points. So every time, if they say, you, don't, you go to work, but you don't drive your own car, you, you use public transport, then they calculate that, and it turns into energy points. If the energy point, I mean, energy point, then after that they convert to carbon, how much into a carbon, and then they relate it to the trees. If the amount you save is equivalent to one tree, so that tree comes to your apps. You will see one tree on your app. So then there's uh, and comp uh, and, uh, so the Alibaba company, they use that carbon and translate into the money and bring the tree back to the real, to the real forest. So you guys only got what virtual tree on your phone, but they do in the real world. The, the Alibaba company. You could imagine, why should I do that? I have a question, even from my own groups. Why, why somebody need to buy carbon? You're asking if why is someone trying to buy carbon? Yeah, why, why do we need, yeah, why, let's say, why you buy carbon, for example? Uh, I think the people who has the power, the right amount of power, uh, wants to buy carbon from the people who is emitting carbon um, to lessen the carbon which is emitted to the environment. They're using the carbon they bought uh, and provide it to the forests and okay. it's a bit complicated. Okay. Almost there, 50%. You buy carbon one thing because you're also emitting carbon. Because you want to what we call carbon footprint, right? You have carbon footprints, which means you are, let's say you fly, you're from where? Oh yeah, I could end it, okay. If you fly from the Philippines to here, how many kilo you can calculate, right? And then you can turn it into carbon emission. So that are your carbon footprints. And you already got, let's say, by coming here, I emit, let's say, 10 ton of carbon. It could be equivalent to one small tree like this one. Then you plant it for five years. So that's why you say, I don't want to be blamed for the environmental destruction because of my flight back in here. You don't blame AIT, you blame yourself. Okay? <laughs> And then you can say, now I pay this farmer to plant the trees, then I'm, I'm carbon neutral because I don't emit any, anything. I emit carbon, but I buy it back. So that is one thing. The other one, we call carbon market. There's a big carbon market, so I will show that later. Okay. If you are the buyer, which one you would like to buy? It doesn't matter to me which has a good quality, which has a good rate, and buy that one. Okay. So anybody want to do the same? Like say, it doesn't matter if the quality is the same, 
then that's okay. That one opinion that is correct. Let's say in Europe, yeah, that, that is okay. But in Europe, in general public, if you sell something with a certification, they don't even look at it. They don't even care about quality. They just look at it. If I have a logo here, this product has been certified by something. So that you can sell it and the market go. And if you don't have this one in Europe, they call it environmental tax, carbon tax, fossil fuel tax. They accumulate again and again. So by doing this, Alibaba could be, have a good name in international recognition. It has been recognized by the UN. And because of that, every, everybody talks about Alibaba, 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 right? And then when you go online, you see the product you want to buy because you know Alibaba is a good name. So that one thing. Other thing, they can sell carbon also to other third party. Let's say, you know, if I don't produce anything, but still I, I think I can, you know, make some business out of it. I buy your, I pay you in the beginning. Let's say when I pay it, five dollars. And after five years, it goes to ten dollars. Then there is a, what we call registration system where you can go and check in there. So there is a very transparent system there. So what is important, the branding and environmental protection for yourself, for the earth altogether and then for carbon revenue. I think this group, they will target carbon revenue in, in the future. Now they have been, you know, many media pay attention to what they are doing. So which means they get advertising for free, right? So this kind of, uh, this kind of value people can get from by doing environmental, what we call carbon offsetting project. Okay? So yeah, I, I already talked, so just go quickly. So that's the company we, we, we talked earlier. So, they just started, I think they just started uh, two years ago, two or three years ago. And they already reached this level, 2.8 billion, right? So very, very fast. There's only one guy who do that. So the idea what he did, okay, yeah, I want to say this is the innovative one. So the first one is easy. So he tried to deliver the, the fresh food in one day. What does it mean? He only looked for a nearby restaurant, so the app tells where it is. And you can tell your driver to bring it to that. And the restaurant don't need to buy more. They only buy enough. Because if you buy more, let's say you have left over, right? You want, you know, you cook again and give to the customer tomorrow. Who knows? Only you know, right? But then this app tells him that, okay, I only need this much. Give me this. Tomorrow, give me again. Then what they, how they can control drivers? This is, I think this is very innovative. They use the military ranking based on this, uh, a score criteria, so punctuality. Let's say if I'm a farmer, I want I book driver to come in to pick the, the, the vegetable at 8 in the morning. He come at 8.20. Okay, then he come at 8.40. Then the farmer rate them, and the system know how, what time he arrived there. And after that, we, uh, the system also ran the, based on customer review. If you are a bad guy or good guy, you know, the, the farmer can tell. And then they also review based on retention rate. Let's say whether I'm a driver, I can go to the same customer or maybe I start losing my customer because of my behavior. So based on that, they give a ranking like general, surgeon, commander, all these kind of name. They give it to, to the drivers. So which means if they are punctual, if they, are, they have good uh, custom reviews and they have retention rate, they become a general. You know, then they command all other drivers. And they got a lot of salary, not bad. They got like about uh, 850 pounds per month. And here are the companies that are using AI, uh, machine learning, uh, Internet of Things, and analytics. So I think you know better about analytics. So what they do, I can just say simply, they try to further use satellite imagery to screen the the, the water temperatures, then they can estimate how much, uh, whether the fish, how the fish behave. Then under the water, they have the sensor, the, the internet of thing, they also check the behavior of the fish, and then they use analytic to check, to compare with them, and then the system tell the, f the fish owner, or the system, sorry, not fish owner, the system, directly that put the, put the food now, at how much. And after that, close it, stop it. So that's that the idea. So they just got funding about $8 million already, and they just started. 
and yeah, this is the and for and what this is a very big one, and they just started 2016, and they already planned. Uh, they have already 300 million users. They are powerful, right? Because they belong to Alibaba groups, and Alibaba group has Ali AliPay, right? Aunt Sorry. Now its name is Aunt Financial Services. Yeah, the, the the money they 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 are giving. Yeah. Then the an app they have AliPay. If you buy something on product online, there is a call uh, the the payment system, the e-cash, the AliPay. So what they did, they tell AliPay user that okay, switch to uh, and there is another apps and for us. If you do that, you get this much. And then they switch to it. That's why uh, out of 450 million users, 300 million start using this app. So they, yeah, they plan so far, only one year they plant 13 million tree already. And they protect 800 hectare of land and they will pl plant uh, another 500 million uh, trees. So, in, you see, I, uh, only in, in nine months they can generate 300 million users in nine months. You know, very, very powerful. And yeah, so, they, so far in, in, one, in one year they already achieved this much emission reduction. So what if carbon price $10 per ton? In just in one year they just do this voluntarily. They, already, they can generate already $1 million, right? So it will be $10, $10 per ton. The carbon price fluctuated, so it, it's not really always 10. Sometimes it's two dollars, five dollars. Sometimes it go 10. It depends on. In the in 2007, it go up to 22 dollars. So now it, it go up again. So up because of the Paris Agreement. And then how it look like the the like say if you plant the tree on your your mobile on your app, you see your your virtual tree. Let's say how many trees you have planted on your phone. Then you can go and check in the reality also. So that's why very transparent. Let's say you can go look for your tree where your tree, somewhere there. Because you know. And they track you every tree, single tree. Okay, so if you if you are a buyer, let's say if you do that, you, you this is not really you are you are not really a buyer, you only save energy by changing your behavior. Let's say instead and if you go to to uh, Chuchu Park, I'm not sure you know Chuchu Park. You go to Bangkok, for example. Instead of going by car one by one, if three of, or four of you are going one car, four of you are going one car, then this is how much you can save carbon. And that, that by doing that, you can also you feel good, right? You see, I, by changing my behavior, I can just go there. Let's say in, if you are you live in cold country like in Japan, maybe in China. Usually, when you go to bathroom, you take bathroom, you hot tub, right? Sometimes you just go there and sit there like you know, 30 minutes or 40 minutes. What if you just spend 10 minutes, 20 minutes and go back? Then you can save 50% of energy. So that's how you can convert energy into, into real forest. Okay, so uh, uh, for the forest, why we need to do that? So this, this is based on the, the raft uh, estimate. We are destroying about 15 billion trees per year. You don't know what a big tree like this. You are destroying. I mean, not really destroying. Sometimes we, we make this like this kind of you know wooden uh, furniture that's offered from tree, right? So we are losing about 15 billion, and we spend 50 billion dollar per year, but still we are losing six billion per tree uh, per year. So this is something that we need to do something about it. And uh, two years ago, they had agreement in in uh, in the U.S. I mean, it based in the U.S. but they. The agreement, international agreement. So by 2030, we'll, we aim to restore 350 million hectare forest, degraded forest. So if you could think well, this is the opportunity when you guys, you know, in the next four or five years you graduate, or you can, you can even form a team to do it, this kind of thing, to, to try to target this one. 350 million, it, it, it's uh, a lot of opportunity that you can bring in. When you do forest trees, it's not just about forest trees. You protect the forest here. What happens, people living on the fo along the forest, they need food to eat. So to protect the forest, you, you need to create opportunity for them to survive. So what if you create smart agriculture for them? What if you create what we call uh, mini hydropower? You know this, right? Let's say 
village living like this one. You don't need to have big, to have big hydro power. You just have one megawatt, small one, using the river, and then could be enough for two or three village. If you can develop this kind of technology to tell the buyer that I am doing this, and the beneficial uh, beneficiary of this project is ten village, for example. By doing that, I can save this much carbon because I don't hydropower. We don't produce any in, uh, any CO2, and then you bring farmer to work on their own field instead of let them go to the forest because they don't have anything to do. They would go to the forest and cut down the tree because they they want money to send their kid to school, right? So those kind of things you could come up with this kind of idea because there are many ways you can come up. You are, you are still young and you have you have a long vision and you have time to do it. Okay, and yeah, so I talked earlier already so by 2030, so we want to achieve a 315 million hectares, so this is the opportunity that we, we could achieve. If you could think that every hectare of forest you restore back, it can contain from 100 to 500 tons of carbon. It's even more than this one. Then you know how much we are emitting per year. Like this is I put an average, say in uh, emission in Qatar. I'm not sure you got anybody from Qatar. So Qatar, the emission per capita per year, is very high, the highest one in the world. You know why? Yeah, they are live. Everything they use energy, they use petroleum. So that that the highest one, and also. But their population is not high, so we, it's still, you, know, you, you, you talk about in terms of significance, maybe it's still not, it's still not much, but in, in China, 7.6 tons of carbon per year. So this is what we call a carbon footprint, right? So if you don't want to be blamed for this one, let's say, you know, you don't, at least when you have children, you want to say that, hey, I don't, I don't emit this CO2, I plant this tree, I emit every year about 8 tons of carbon per year, but I plant the tree, so don't blame me for destroying the environment. I do some good things for, for you. Okay? So this is something that you want to know, right? If you plant one hectare of the forest back, then you can see how many people can offset their carbon footprints. Okay, so... And there are technologies that have been introduced to do this. Many, yeah? not... They, they started doing this, all the start-up. They just started a few years ago, even just one year ago. And if you have idea, you can also do like them. Okay, so that everyone can do this. The, and let's say biocarbon engineering, so I'm going to introduce that today. So that is the, the company that are using drone to plant the trees. They can plant 100,000 of trees per day. Can you imagine that? 100,000 trees per day. And two operators can command 10 drones at the same time. It's, a drone is not difficult, you could make it difficult. Difficulty you could try to command like this. No, if you want drone to fly, come here, that's difficult. If you want the drone to fly in an open space, you just tell them the flying, what we call it, a, a fly planning. You, tell, you say, okay, now I want you to fly on this area. Then you need to plant the tree like this, like this. You, you set all algorithm in there and let them fly it. And then after that, they come back to the same place. You only need to watch out is that when the drone come back, nobody stand there. You know, otherwise the drone would just land on your head or on the car. So that, which means if you, two of you, at one time when you program it, just send the drone off, so one of you can, can watch three drones, or no, five drones per time. So what, this is what this company is doing. So either you want, let's say, you, know, you don't need to use drone anyway, depend on if you are good at something, just think about that. Don't think about the drone, always. The drone only an idea, but if you are good at doing something, think from your own perspective and do from there. So this is an example. You can see how they do it. So I will show you how the, the bioengineering uh, are doing. So this is an example. Again, if, if you destroy 2,000 hectares of rainforest, how much in terms of emission, how much it would be? So this, this guy, they put a car, we may assume that 
if you clear 2,000 hectares of tropical forest, it means that you can drive the car around the world more than 60, about 60,000 times. They say, you know, let's say you go from Thailand, go to Europe, back to Thailand again and again and again. So that's how emission. Because you, when you drive your car, you, you, you use gasoline, right? And that gasoline emits CO2. So what, what does it mean here? The carbon store in the forest is very high. So that, that's why we need to protect the forest or restore it back. Many countries in the Asian, in South Asian region, I mean in South Asian also, like, like say in Thailand, for example, before 1989, we had a lot of forest here. And after that, I think in the Philippines also, before 1989, a lot of forest. And after that, the, the big forest going down like this. Also in Cambodia now, I'm, I'm originally from Cambodia, but yeah, I, I moved away from the country for more than, yeah, about equivalent some, to some of your age here. So I've been away more than half of my life. And so what I see, the forest is going trend like this. In Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, Thailand, and now we are in the state what we call a transition. And this is where, where the restoration takes place. Now the big trees are not there. No, who would cut anymore? Because you don't have any tree to cut. The only option is to restore it back. Yeah, so there is more chance for you to restore it. Let's say, this is an example. Now you don't need to remember the graph. Yeah, example, let's say, if you restore the forest globally, it's equivalent to the carbon emission coming from 650 million cars. So here they, they put that, you, you put the car out of the, out the road. That I don't want to use the term that because it's not correct. I mean, you put the car out of the road, who is going to work? You know, you, you, are, you going to, are you going to work to Bangkok by foot from here to Bangkok? Yeah. So what I want to say, if you do restoration for the, you know, for the whole globe, you can uh, offset about 600 million uh, car of entire emissions, and you do a wider forest uh, conversion. So what did forest conversion mean that, let's say, you have, like, say you have Khao Yai National Park, big like this one, the National Park in Thailand, for example. Instead of cutting this part for agriculture, can you find a way for people to live instead of clearing the forest? So that we call avoided uh, conversion. Right? So many countries, uh, because of this, many, uh, the clearing of natural forest happened because the farmer don't have anything, don't have food to eat enough. Like uh, you look at Cambodian, for example, the population growth rate is about one point. 6% something, which means the demand is continued to high to go up, but the forest go down. So that is very much different, right? So this is where the clearing of forest uh, occur. And so again, this is only an idea. So if if you, you re replant the forest uh, back in, on globally, this is how much you can achieve in terms of emission from the car. And then why we need big data? I already said earlier, so simply put in this graph, for example, you have five farmers, and each farmer plant one tree together. The farmers are not in the same place, right? So you need to track the farmer, you need to know when, where he planted, and then how the tree grow, you know, every six months, every one year. And then if the buyer come in, they want to know, okay, now this tree you plant three years ago, where it is now? Can you take a photo and send to me? You know, this is where, you know, when you put, this is only like five, what if you have five million farmers? Can you do that by, by Excel? Right? It's not really possible. Eh? Okay, so this is the kind of thing that why we need data and why we need to track this one. And with the new technology like drone, let's say, like, let's say I told earlier, the Google Earth engine is free. So everyone can use it for free. So that's why I'm saying it's all your idea. You have an idea how to use it. You can make use of it. Now the difficult thing, I, I'm, I'm, I can tell you, maybe you are smarter than our student here. We, have, we are trying to identify different forest types by looking at what we call the threshold. If you do analyze this, you can find the threshold. And then we want to find out this location is bamboo. This location is tick plantation. This, this location is eucalyptus plantation. If you could find this idea to get this threshold, you will become one of the big guys. Google would recognize you. Okay, but we cannot find it yet. We still we are looking for how, an idea how to do it. If you could do that, 
I really wanted to talk because if you talk about this kind of transparency, if Google Earth Engine become a, uh, become a, a tool that people use, everyone use, then you have one of the guys who developed the technology and everyone would use your technology. So every threshold like this, let's say, with this threshold, I can say this is mangrove. With this threshold, this is bamboo. It depends, no? I, I am giving the hint. If you could try to find that, you will be one of the top. No, not many scientists found yet. I can tell you not yet. We are still working hard to get this threshold. But we know it is there, somewhere there. It's only a matter of time, a matter of how we do things. Maybe you have a different idea, you come from this, you come from this, and this you can get the, the threshold. We come from different ways, but that's why we are not finding yet. But we are closing to there. Hopefully we find before you found it. <laughs> and this is the technology they are using. So I talked earlier, so what they put, they fly the drone, they put the, the seed in this one. And then when they drop this, this all in the soil, and this, uh, this is become a fertilizer for the trees. So then as the tree grow, the fertilizer uh, for them enough. When they are growing big, this all melts. This, it's not there. It's not plastic. It's kind of uh, a fertilizer that the tree will need it. And yeah, I think for those who entertain the slide, I think they, the organizer would give it. I don't know. But you can talk. You can, uh, for me, I'm fine. You can make use of it. Um, yeah, it was established in 2014, and if you look at this website, all the scientists are behind this company. They are doing that. So what they do simply, yeah, I just showed a bit about that. So, so what's important, they try to do it, yeah, they can plant the tree, uh, 100,000, so 100,000 uh, trees per single day, and they can save the cost 15% of the traditional one. And they told earlier, so they can fly, you have only two operators, I mean, the, the, you can fly drone uh, five each. So they already started, and this is not just an idea, they already started in, in Australia, in Myanmar. In Myanmar, you, it's not far from here, some of you can go and see what they are doing. They, in Myanmar, they plant in the mangrove forest. Mangrove, you, you know, right? mangroves uh, around the sea, yeah? that's a sea coast. And they have started to do it, and they will expand this to Canada, US, Brazil, and two more. And what they do, first they start to map. They map the look, look area, and they come up with an idea. That by mapping, you get all the information, moisture content, soil condition, topography, everything are there. You, you don't know, but every image taken from the, the drone contains everything that I told you earlier. It can turn, it, even direction, wind direction, you can also do it if you try to look at that direction. So based on that, they, this one will develop algorithm. Let's say, you know, let's say if, if the rock is here, rock is here, if or this land is not, not good for this particular plant, the drone will not drop the plant there. So that's why all this one, they have all the data, but they store it. And they make sure that the tree, there is a chance that the tree can grow. Uh, not just throw it like this, no. then the tree will not grow, they will just die. But they, they make sure that they will get the result from the, from the data. And they plant very fast, you can see here. One tree less than six seconds. One tree, they fly one tree, drop, drop, drop. So every, yeah, every tree less than six seconds. And here, here how it look like. We just drop it, and this is the tree inside here, and then it starts to grow, and, it, and this becomes fertilizer. It's not waste. It's not environmental destruction. So this becomes fertilizer, and then when the tree grows big like this, they don't need fertilizer anymore. They can grow on their own. But it's a small one like this, they need, you know, because not, not only tree here, the tree here also need to compete with their grass. But if the grass go faster than the tree, the tree would die. Because the tree cannot survive if there is no sun and no sunlight for them. And yeah, they use, I thought earlier, they use bi biodegradable seed pot. This is called the yeah, seed pot. And this becomes the fertilizer for, for the tree. And after that, they use drone again to monitor the change of the forest, the change of the soil condition. So because if the, in, in the bare land, the soil condition is not the same after you restore it back. Even the water, uh, the water cycle, not the same. But after you do restoration, you will see the change. And the drone will say, uh, 
they will give another, another map where you can plant different species if you want to plant it. So the tree after planting, it depends on the species, maybe 5, 10 or 15 years you can cut it, but then you restore it back, right? When you cut it, you replant. So the drone will tell you what kind of species you need to replant next to get the best result. So, that, so they keep the data. And yeah, as we said earlier, they, they, are, they use machine learning algorithm to develop this one. So that they make sure, the idea is to make sure that they give the best decision to plant the species. Like if you look at Thailand, there are about 66 species that are recommended for replanted. And then the idea where? So this, this machine learning algorithm will tell this location it should plant should be planted with this, with this, with this. So there is a database for that. And machine learning will do it. That's why they, they take the data very you know, often. And based on that, machine learning will track the behavior of the tree chain. Based on that, they give decision to us. So there, there is a drone, you can just see this, this kind of drone flying plane, right? So that's not difficult, there, is, there are many apps that you can use it, just download apps and tell how you want to fly, how high it is. Usually the apps give you the default numbers, you don't even need to touch it. Unless you, your area is too small and you want to, to take more photo in the area, you can adjust it. But most of the apps, they give you already the, the default value, you don't even need to touch it. After you decide it, then the drone go. If you fly on the larger area, the drone go and play three or four minutes before the battery go down, they come back. You don't need to call them. They know they, they will come back. So that, that's why it's not really difficult. Just install the apps and then uh, calibrate your drone with the apps and then you can just let the drone fly. The more difficult one is you, you control by yourself. That is the more difficult one. It would hit yourself also because you know, it's not really sometimes it just it goes er everywhere. But it just like this one, you just set the fly path and then they will just fly for you. And yeah, I think it, uh, then now assuming that you got up to this point, you got some idea how you can make you of your skill, your knowledge. And then I talk where you can get money and where you uh, possibly, uh, possible source of funding. I'm not sure you have seen this graph before. So that we call it impact investment. So impact investment means that in the, in the past, maybe past five years, until five years ago, the investor only want money back. Right? They just say, I, put, I give you one million, I want 1.5 million back in five years. But the investor now, most of them, they don't say that. 
I want to see that my money is spent and get my return back. At the same time, I want this money to, make sh uh, to be used for local people, for forest protection. I want to know that how many farmers benefit from my investment. So that's why now many people try to do that. Because otherwise they don't get money. Right? So then you need to find an idea how you can bring this, uh, how, to, how, to, how to can try to get the $250 billion. That is from the private sectors. When I talk about $12 trillion, that is the requirement to get two degrees uh, uh, below, two degrees more. So that is the money are there, but how you would get it, it depends on your idea and your skill. You try to look at, I mean, if you are really programmers, I think it is good that you try to understand from this kind of perspective, then you can build a good programmer. We could do the same thing like say, I, I, I'm not a coder, but I like the innovation. I, I see at the time when people talk about machine learning, people go to do, develop a chatbot, right? Everyone likes to do chatbot, chatbot, chatbot. And then it, all in the room here do chatbot. We don't have any idea for the green, for the greening the earth. Then you are the only one who do it. Then the chance for you to get money is high. You have less competition. Right? So if, if you are really a coder, try to spend some time reading this kind of document. I think you will get an idea how you can build an app that can fit to this need. And yeah, we talked earlier why people buy it. There are many, many reasons why people buy it. Like I said, when they buy, they get benefit. This is based on the questionnaire survey that people are asking why they buy carbon. And there are many people, let's say, if they, if they do this project, they can get community benefit. This is where they benefit to local people. And they can also preserve, let's say, if they pay money for protecting the national parks, they get that, they make sure that elephants are there, butterfly are there, uh, what do we call? Honey bill are there. So like, you know, if you are a visitor, you go to the national park. What if you spend one day and don't see anything? Right? If you, if you aim to see at least one honey, a hot, hot, horn bill, for example, and then you don't find it. How do you feel when you come back? You fly, let's say, from India to Thailand, almost, uh, say, eight, ten hours, and you say, oh, I'm excited to see the uh, honey bill or elephant in Khao Yai National Park. You spend there a few days, you don't see anything. And then what do you feel? So this one of thing, you can get benefit by doing that impact project, you can get biodiversity back and adaptation, and you can also get generate money. If you do things for the local people, let's say you, t you do, uh, what do you call it, the local enterprise, like ecotourism, for example, you employ local people, the people get money also. And other preference is, yeah, it depends on their location. Some, they say percent of them, because the location is there. And they say they also they save the cost. The cost very much. Let's say if you have a factory along the sea coast, for example, that is your factory. You spend, say, $100 million to build that factory. But you don't plant mangrove around that factory. What happens if the storm coming? And it destroys all your factory, 100 million gone. If you plant the tree, maybe you spend only a million dollars. But if you don't plant it, you destroy 100 million of your company. So those kind of things, this is why people try to do it. I think for that, I finished my first part. And the second part, it, uh, it's going to be funny. It's not really funny, we learn together. OK, so the te technology, yeah, technovation is very important in this age because you don't care about the data, you don't care about technology anymore. You care about what idea would come next to make use of the data. And any idea, you, 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 know, you learn about this something and you try to think from your perspective how you can move forward with that. And okay, now I will stop that, but I assume that you, you have your own products, well, MVP, and you have your own idea, you form a team, like four or five. Usually the team, the more effective team is only three, no? That based on my you know, research, the more effective founding team is three. I don't know why, but the, the study found that. So if you assume that you have three, and now you start to sell your products, how would you do? You say, now I have a big idea. I said in the next one year, it will go for $100 million. And, but to go from there, you have a gap because you don't have money to do it, and you don't want to reach your own money. You need to prove it. So this is we call it a uh, pitch deck. So where you, you, know, you, you do a presentation like this, and then you 
all investors sit in front of you and they would ask you a question after your presentation. They would, the investor would say like this, I put the money like that. You can see in, in YouTube, just yes, search for pitch deck and you see some inv investors just put their hand immediately and you, they see your product. Because they have five minutes, or you have five minutes, they have few minutes asking questions. Some investors don't, but they just say, okay, I want to put in. So the first one about sustainability trackers. So one speaker will talk about that, and second one, he talk about new idea about developing the new plane where everyone can use, and then even up the plane, you, you can also drive on the road. So he want to build a new one, and he actually he already developed prototype, and he test already. And the third one, she, uh, her, yeah, her company is Cyber Angel. So she wants to make sure that the online documents are not going to the hand of the bad guys. So she, she will do that. So I can, so for that, so you pay attention to this and you will have fun. And if you are going for that, you will do exactly the same. The problem is that we overuse the natural resources. This is the famous figure presented by leading environmental scientists uh, on planetary boundaries. And as you can see in red color, we have already exceeded the planetary, planetary boundaries regarding the, some of the uh, re, uh, critical elements of life, like climate change and biodiversity. Uh, the green area is the safe operating space for the humanity. And the reason is the overuse of resources. Today, uh, we, con we need one and a half planets to fulfill our needs. And if we continue the path like this, uh, after a few decades, we would need three planets to fulfill our needs. And this is uh, the situation that presents the uh, global situation. But if everyone in this planet would consume, like us, Finns, we would need the three planets already now. However, it's still possible to choose the sustainable path. And the overuse of resources is not only a problem for uh, decision makers or politicians. Private household consumption consists around 70% of the carbon footprint in Finland, and the figure is similar globally. Uh, yeah. And we know about this. We know about environmental problems. And often when asked, our attitudes are pro-environmental. However, our actions are not. So, the challenge is uh, that the private uh, consumption is not only what we buy in a shop. It consists of uh, electricity, mobility, uh, housing, goods and services, as, and food. And the challenge is that it's very difficult for us to know about the environmental effect of our everyday activities. Because the impact chain the gap, the time lag between the action and the uh, effect is so long. And we believe that uh, we need real-time feedback in order to change our behavior. If I give you a very simple analogy, if I accidentally hit someone, I see the consequences right away and I apologize. We can think that we hit the environment now, but we don't see the uh, direct consequences of that. And based on the research done in our group, we believe that we need direct feedback on the environmental effects of our actions in order to change the behavior. And the solution is a very simple mobile application. It's very easy to use. It's directly connected to your energy company now in the first stage and hopefully later on to your grocery shop. Uh, there's no uh, laborers data entries needed. And our focus here is particularly the feedback, feedback mechanism. That we believe that there are various ways to give feedback on your environmental actions. And different people need different kinds of feedback. The feedback could be supportive, it could be presented in a visually nice way, it could be comparative, it could be based on a pure fact. 
It's something which is familiar to a person instead of like kilos in carbon, for example. And then the results of your consumption can be shared in the social media to get the peer support. And we believe here that uh, together with this direct feedback uh, and the social pressure from your peer group will direct our lifestyles, lifestyles to be more sustainable. So, this year we will develop this idea further. This is an idea. We will test uh, different kind of feedback mechanisms uh, people need. And if you are interested in this, uh, you are, are welcome to, to join us. And the team is excellent now, right away. We have expertise from uh, science and uh, environmental science and policy, socio-cognitive aspects of sustainability, carbon calculations, sustainable lifestyles and consumption, and environmental education. So it's a sustainability tracker. Thank you very much. With the speed and comfort of a business jet, it gives you everything that traveling lacks today. A speed of up to 450 kilometers per hour, an all electric range of 500 kilometers, no traffic jams, no delays, and probably the best view. Nature loves the Lilium jet because it emits zero CO2, no fine dust emissions, no, it needs no infrastructure, and is inaudible in cruising flight. On the ground, you can even fold your wings and drive the last mile to your destination on the road. We have several flying prototypes that demonstrate the concept and the whole flight program. We've done funny indoor flights and transition flights from hover flight to forward flight. We founded Lilium in spring 2015. We have currently six people working full time on the project. Um, the founding team consists of four engineers and PhDs who are experts in their field. We've gained our experience at big companies like ADV and Porsche, but also in research institutions like the German Aerospace Center and Fraunhofer Institute. By the end of 2016, we will grow the company to around 15 people. We are currently funded by the European Space Agency and the Climate Kick Program from the European Union and have a wide range of partners in industry and research contributed to We are also partner in the official manned multi-copter certification program from the German government. Our market lies at the crossroads between private aviation and luxury cars and has an annual market volume of 29 billion euros. Customers range from private individuals like sports pilots, wealthy fund junkies and business travelers to companies like air taxi services, helicopter services and surveillance services. We've talked to lots of customers and the feedback was overwhelming. In fact, we've already sold the first delivery positions for our jets. Our business model is research and development, full-scale production and global sales and services for a range of vertical takeoff and landing jets. Our technology is scalable up to very large aircraft and is secured in several US and German patents pending. Currently, we are preparing the maiden flight of our new 1 to 2 scale prototype, which can demonstrate the full functioning of the final jet. And we've developed and tested the electric aircraft engine, a new electric aircraft engine for the manned aircraft, setting new standards in low noise emission and power to weight ratio. This engine is the enabler for an efficient and quiet electric vertical takeoff and landing jet. In May next year, we will do the first manned hover flight with a full scale prototype. In 2018, the aircraft will be ready for certification and market entry is planned for 2019. To achieve that next milestone of the full scale prototype, we are currently raising 500,000 euros. If you would like to be part in the revolution of private aviation, I'm looking forward to talking to you after the pitch. Thank you. Angel. We explore the non-indexed internet 
to protect major firms from costly data leaks. Here, in my hands, I have the whole blueprints of the sensitive IT networks of a major bank. Here is the next product launch campaign of the largest luxury brand. And here are the technical drawings of unreleased airplane engines. These three documents are just a few among the billions we find every day. Where do we find this information? It's unbelievable, but it is freely accessible online. No password, no protection, nothing. If I give you the exact address, you can download it. So you probably think it is on Google, right? Well, no, it isn't, because it is not indexed by search engines. The tricky part is actually to find where to look, and that is our expertise. Since I have started talking, we have already found thousands more documents belonging to any company worldwide. These documents are floating in a huge nest of the internet universe. They can be on the dark and deep web, which you might have heard of, or even further away, on unprotected servers, for instance, or the Internet of Things. We have developed robots to venture in these abysmal parts, pinpoint their exact location, and bring them back to their owners. And we bring them back quickly. Imagine if a hacker or a competitor were to find this information. The research and development, security, or reputation of a company could be compromised. And in the end, it could cost the company millions of dollars in damages. Or even make the valuation crash, like what happened to Sony. Or even get the CEO fired, like what happened to Target. We detect the information as soon as it leaks, which enables our clients to act proactively and neutralize the threat. Our clients are major European firms from multiple sectors, such as Louis Vuitton, Sanofi, or Deutsche Bank, who protect their IT infrastructure well, but also share a lot of confidential information with third parties they cannot control. Lawyers, consultants, for instance. A lot of this information makes its way online. We sell them an annual recurring subscription to look for the never-ending flow of data leaks. We provide real-time alerts through a SaaS interface. I've, three years after being created, I am very proud to say that we will reach 2 million euros in bookings this year, double from last year. We make an average of 100,000 euros per client in annual recurring revenue paid up front. And we have achieved this with 1 million euros in seed funding. The founding team is composed of Mathieu Fignas, PhD in algorithmics, who has designed the intelligent crawlers that help us explore the infinity of the internet and beyond. Stevan, machine learning specialist who has created the artificial intelligence that helps us automatically uh, categorize the billions of documents we detect every day. And his best quality, he is an Alto University alumni. Erwan, who spent 10 years in the financial industry, he could basically sell ice cubes in Lapland, and I joined early on to help support our growth. We are now 30, located in Paris, where the whole Cybel team is watching. Coucou la team! As you've understood by now, we find the precious data of companies all around the world. What we need to do now is to bring it back to them, and there is no time to waste. To our strategy, to achieve this as fast as possible is to partner with major incidence response integrators or consulting firms such as IBM or PwC. To do that, we are raising 3 million euros. These companies have a global distribution network, of course, but they also have the analyst manpower that can make very good use of our data. And what is in it for them? They can do some cross-selling by solving the incidents that we detect. One of them even told us that out of every dollar we make in mitigation, they can make five out of remediation. Simply put, this will enable us to achieve a five billion dollar yearly market around the world. Kitos for your attention. So you get, uh, you get some idea of what's going on, right? Eh? So you could imagine one day you go there and you have five minutes and talk in front of many people. Usually hundreds, they call it hundreds uh, competitions. 
So you ask like 10 from the 100. So usually they give a chance to five of them, and you speak in front of this. And it could be your investor, it could be your teammate. Some of them, after you do presentation, they will come and talk to you. Okay, so five minutes, it's everything. What is important, if you, you, you remember earlier for the, the first instructor who talks about pigeons, you have only 30 seconds, you should go to the problem directly. Right? So the first speaker, she, take, she took like almost three minutes yeah, to explain her problems. When it comes to solution, almost nothing. Okay. So then the, 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 the second one is very good at doing that. But would you think about the markets? It might not be happening in the next few years. It might be a longer time. So it's, the idea is good, but by the time there, the competition are always coming again, more and more. But the third one, she can do it from now. She already do it actually. And every document all around us, we don't know. Even in the website, if you, if you know how to check it, you see many websites are not really working well. So that you can find out. Okay, so I just give a hint, but it's up to you. You, have, you might have different perspective on how to evaluate them. But think from, from your being investors. Okay, I think for that, I would like to close my talk. Okay, for that, thank you very much for coming and I, I hope you enjoy your summer camp at AIT. I'll see you around. Thank you. Thank you.